In this video, I'll be giving you three tips on how to study computer science effectively. I just graduated from college with a computer science degree, so a lot of this is still fresh in my mind on how I studied and how I was able to do fairly well um, in some of my classes. So if this is interesting to you, stay tuned, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. First tip is to find some kind of study group. Find the smartest person in your class, in your computer science classes. Become friends with them and don't leave their side. I'm kidding, don't be creepy. Study with them, have a study session with them to go over some homework or ask some questions about some of the concepts that you weren't able to understand. I was lucky enough to be friends with some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life who happen to be computer science majors and they would sit down and teach me all the time about concepts I didn't understand. And this especially came in handy when I was taking upper level classes. We had to learn about OS and threading and locks and mutexes and things that I, at first it was really hard to grasp these concepts. I would have my friends sit down and kind of just explain to me these different concepts and talk to me about them in a way that my professor kind of wasn't able to communicate as well with me and sometimes it just takes a second person to talk about something for it to actually click in your head and don't ask them for like direct answers on your homeworks and stuff because obviously that's cheating but you want to just like ask them about the concepts just be like hey professor so and so was talking about this algorithm today and i didn't really understand it do you think that you could explain it to me again and Hopefully, if that's a good friend, they'll sit down with you and kind of break it down with you piece by piece. Because they're your friends, they usually have more patience with you and are able to break it down in a language that you'll understand. And it's really important to work in groups because computer science is can be super heavy and dense to understand. So it's really nice to have a bunch of people who are kind of suffering with you and are able to help you out with problems if you need them and for you to be able to help them out too. And when you're working in a group, you have a bunch of minds together trying to figure something out. Studying with a group as you are on this journey of getting your computer science degree has a lot of benefits. Once you graduate and enter the real world, you're expected to be able to know how to work with others already. And when you work with a group of people, you're, a you're all able to share your ideas and share your code. When you do that, you're able to do like a transfer of knowledge. I can be giving you information that you didn't know before and you can be giving me information that I didn't know before. And when you do this, you're strengthening both people. You're strengthening a whole group and your code is never going to be that great when you do it alone but it could be even better if you have a bunch of people who are able to help you out if it's allowed obviously but when you have a bunch of people who are able to put their minds together and help each other it strengthens and makes what you can do so much better my second tip is to take advantage of all the resources you have to your disposal make sure to ask for help when you need it i had so much trouble with asking for help in the beginning and a little bit towards the end where I would get stuck for days on a problem but I wouldn't ask for help when I needed to. That only made things worse for me. So when you're stuck or when you've been on a problem for a little bit too long and you want to give up, just remember that your professors are there for a reason. They're there to teach you. They're there to help you. They have office hours for a reason so that you can go in and ask for help when you need it. Not to look for answers, but to get actual help from them. And my school also had TA sessions. So teaching assistants would be in our classrooms to help out when they when students needed it they would also have set teaching assistant times after classes from like four to seven and seven to ten every single weekday to help people and it was amazing and they were probably one of the reasons why i was able to get over such a hump when it came to some of my classes is because i was able to ask for help and took advantage of those resources when it came to studying and then another resource is google just google it i promise you all the concepts that you're learning right now in computer science all the all the hard problems that you're getting right now when you're looking back at your notes just google it 
everything is online in this day and age and you're able you can be able to find a youtube video about literally anything and this is something that i again didn't realize until later down the line is that if i'm not understanding mutexes and threading i can literally go on google to find 500 study guides on mutexes and threading and then i can find another thousand videos on the same thing on YouTube, taught by different professors, taught by different people who are able to understand this concept and then give it back to you in a language that you might be able to understand. After you've already read the book, after your professor's already given the lecture, do a triple check of information knowledge for yourself and go through Google, go through these study guides on topics or concepts that you just learned in class and make sure that you actually get it. My third tip is please don't procrastinate just don't do it it's not worth it it's it's not worth the pain and suffering that you'll feel procrastinating with computer science projects and homeworks is not the same as procrastinating a paper a paper you can bang out in maybe a couple hours and be done with it with the computer science project or a programming project or whatever it may be there are so many variables that could end up going wrong that you may not account for that it's just not worth leaving it until the last minute bugs that you'll get sometimes they're bugs that are super simple but you don't see it in the moment because you've been looking at your code for so long and so you just need to take a step back do something else come back look at it and get back to it but you don't have that type of luxury of time when you've procrastinated until a day or two before it's due. So just do yourself a favor, get started on programming projects as soon as you get them, at least read through what's required of you, what inputs and outputs are, what maybe you've already gotten a skeleton of code, look through that, see what it does, maybe outline the functions that you might need. Just do something in those first day or two and then like chill out for, for a little bit and then get back to it but just don't procrastinate and leave everything to the last minute because it's only going to bite you in the butt and it's not going to help studying down the line or with projects down the line you have to be able to nip that procrastination that procrastination side of you in the bud long before you get to these higher level classes that are going to be a lot more demanding and we're going to ask you to do a lot harder things so those are my three tips on how to effectively study for computer science or studying in a computer science major. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and make sure to check out my computer science versus software engineering um, degree video that I did a couple days ago or last week or something like that. Be sure to check that out. Yeah, again, hope you liked the video. Leave some comments, let me know. And make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Peace.